So what happens when a two and a half ton Range Rover Sport SVR meets the Yorkshire Moors for a couple of days and just for once it neither rains nor snows? Answer, this. We drove the new SVR on both road and track for this test, as you'll soon discover, and it turned out to be quite some revelation in both instances. I mean, it just feels like you are sucking the horizon towards you. It's outrageous. It's just tremendous, though. The sense of just... It's completely mental, this car. Proper bloody handling. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. You should not be able to do that in a two and a half ton Range Rover. You're always going to have a monster amount of traction with four wheel drive, even with 550 horsepower. It even stops quite well. On the face of it, the SVR isn't that much different to the Range Rover Sport we already know and mostly love. Its supercharged V8 engine produces a bit more power than normal, but not heaps more. It weighs some 40 kilograms less than the regular Sport model, and its body shell is a touch more aerodynamically efficient too. Yet in reality, the SVR is a completely different animal compared with any other Range Rover. And that's because it's been created, say the people at Range Rover, to be a driver's car. A proper, balls-to-the-wall kind of driver's car. SVO's perspective is to push the boundaries of Jaguar and Land Rover products. We talk about performance, we talk about capability, and we talk about luxury. And those three dimensions, we want to really, if you like, just push the envelope. Make some very special products, products with integrity, um, products which real enthusiasts will will love. It's subtly different in in every respect. I think um, it, it, it's tuned very differently. Whether it's the engine, whether it's the transmission, whether it's the steering, whether it's the dampers, it's tuned very very differently. You know, it appeals to all the senses. So it's got a it's got a great great soundtrack. Um, you know, you can, you can hear and feel the car, but it feels significantly different. I mean, very very easy to recognise you're in a different car. So, um, you know, I guess it ultimately will depend on what dimension you're measuring it, but it's a, you know, it's a step change away from the, from the, the regular supercharger. You know, it's not a race car, it's a car that gets from A to B, you know, very rapidly on road, um, loses none of its off-road capability, so, you know, that we've always talked about breadth of capability for a, for a Land Rover and a Range Rover specifically, and this just pushes that breadth you know, the anchor of its off-road capability stays where it is, um, but it pushes that breadth and it's, um, you know, it's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a very accomplished drive on road. Five hundred and forty-two horsepower in a Range Rover. That is absolutely ridiculous, but it's also bloody marvellous. The first thing you notice when you climb into the Range Rover SVR are the seats. They're miles more sporting, miles more supportive than the normal Range Rovers. And as a result, the whole car just feels, well, completely different from a Range Rover. Yes, you've still got this kind of majestic high up driving position, but it kind of feels kind of half GT Coupe, half SUV, and, and with a little bit of proper sports car mixed in as well. And there are so many toys to play with, and you do have to play with the toys to get the most out of the SVR. The first is the eight-speed gearbox. The second is the new dynamic drive program. On a road like this, going across the Yorkshire Moors, you have to put it in dynamic because it just tightens up the dampers, it tightens up the steering response, the gear change responses become a little bit quicker, the throttle response gets faster, kind of harder edged, even the exhaust note changes. The exhaust note, let's talk about the exhaust note. The 
the engineers at Range Rover reckon that this thing sounds considerably naughtier than it does in the F-Type Coupe. <laughs> and this is a Range Rover. And, more to the point, they're not bullshitting. The roll stiffness of the SVR is up by 20%, and this one rides on the optional 22-inch wheels and bespoke Continental tyres. On the road, these changes make a massive difference to the way it drives and responds. The SVR feels instantly sharper, much faster, and hugely more agile everywhere, as you can see. It is so quick, this thing. Yes, it's heavy. You know what though? It doesn't matter that it weighs two and a half tons because select first, wind up the brakes a bit, give it some throttle, give it a bit more throttle and release the brakes. 0 to 60, two miles an hour in 4.7 seconds. 0 to 100 miles an hour in just a whisker over 10 seconds and 162 miles an hour flat out in fifth sixth and seventh it won't do it in eighth not quite but because eighth is such a huge overdrive gear but yeah top speed limited top speed in three out of its eight four gears you gotta quite like that we claim it to be the fastest land rover suv ever the most powerful land rover ever it was uh, very compelling around the nurburgring for um Eight minutes 14 seconds which is fairly rapid that's since um, I think been surpassed by another manufacturer but it's a it's certainly without a shadow of a doubt a very very fast Land Rover products and the fastest most powerful we've ever delivered um, and that's that's important as I say we're just pushing the boundaries of everything that we do Obviously, because they have given it so much more energy underneath the bonnet, <laughs> to the point where you can actually become airborne across more of roads like this, they have they have beefed up the brakes a bit, but the, the actual discs themselves and the calipers are exactly the same as the Range Rover Sport. But what they've done is sort the cooling out. I mean, that's always going to be the big problem in a monster like this. You never leave the impression that you're at the controls of an enormous great car that's got a whopping amount of power and torque. But it is controlled. It's much more controlled than a normal Range Rover Sport. The steering definitely feels more connected, more kind of precise in everything it does. And you can throw it around. And when you do throw it around, it does some really quite cool things. In fact, sometimes you can even get it to oversteer a bit slightly. Absolutely marvellous. Absolutely marvellous this thing is. <laughs> I don't know what other people on the road must think of you when you're coming towards them at God knows what speed, airborne. <laughs> but you kind of go into this mode where you think, well, I don't really care actually, it's just I'm having too much fun. It's, it's, it's too good, it's too sorted for me to give that much of a hoop about what someone else might think of me. Okay, I think it's time to calm down a bit and maybe a light to a track just to really see what you can do with this thing. I suspect that it's going to be just as much fun on the track as it is on the road, which is a kind of mad thing to say about a Range Rover, but I don't know, let's go and see. Croft is one of the best racetracks there is anywhere in the UK. It's fast and downright scary in some places, technical and challenging in others, and in the rain, well, it's pretty much the perfect playground for a toy like the SVR. Dynamic mode, traction control off, exhaust on full noise, 
one thing that you just kind of hope, pray that they've got sorted. I mean, that's just under, un- understeer and then huge chunk of oversteer, followed by the delights of the DSC system. I mean, oh, it's starting to slide there and there at 90. You see what I mean by how rapid this track is? It's just, if you make a mistake in certain bits of this track, you just end up in the middle of a field, a very, very long way into the field as well. Whoa, that is <laughs> proper slippery through there. I'll tell you what though, you, come on, this thing weighs two and a half tonnes, we know that. And it is not, I'm afraid, no matter what Range Rover say, designed. Primarily to be uning around the track, but it doesn't actually feel completely at sea. In fact, in many ways, particularly through those quick corners and out of there, I mean, you're always going to have a monster amount of traction with four wheel drive, even with 550 horsepower. On the track, the SVR feels not just grippier and more controlled, but also much more exciting to drive than the regular sport. It's still a bit of a wrestling match, as you can see, but that increased roll stiffness really does make a big difference, as does the superior brake cooling. Even after five consecutive hot laps, there was almost no fade, which is some achievement for a tank like this. And its gearbox and steering also work a treat when dialed up to their most aggressive modes, by the dynamic drive program. Oh goodness me. It feels like a huge barge through there. And now it's just started to properly rain again. Oh, but you can muller the curbs in it. I like that. You really can monster the curbs properly. And it doesn't get upset. I suppose if you can go up Ben Nevis, a, a curb at a racetrack is probably not that much of an issue. I don't know. I'm kind of half enjoying it because it's just it's kind of surreal what it can do. But I'm, I'm slightly terrified as well, particularly in the braking zones. And particularly when it's all greasy and wet like this. But do you know what? I'm, I'm somewhere between surprised and gobsmacked how good this thing is on a track. You can drive it really fast. You'd have to have a very, very tidy hot hatch to get away from this around this track. Every extra mile I do with this thing, I like it that much more. I'm, I think I'm right on the cusp of falling completely in love with it. <laughs>